Welcome back to Wood Engineering. My name is Jeff Ferrochko from Carleton University. And today in this video, I'm going to look at um, how to calculate compression resistance at an angle to grain. So, so far we have looked at how do I find the compression resistance of a piece of wood where the load is applied in the same direction parallel to the grain of the piece of wood. Separately, we've looked at how do I find the resistance of a piece of wood with the load at a direction that is perpendicular to the grain. So if this is the grain, if I apply this way, or if I apply this way, the load, I have a bearing strength that I need to calculate. But what happens if I have neither of those pure cases and I have something that is somewhat in between? So I'm applying the load in compression at some angle to the grain, not aligned or perpendicular, but at some angle. And in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to apply some kind of interaction equation between the two to figure out um, what would be a good effective strength to calculate that takes into account both the resistance parallel and perpendicular to grain. So to do this, we are going to look at a um, example um, uh, geometry. Okay, so here I have two pieces of wood, um, one piece framing into the other. And uh, the idea is that I have this piece of wood um, that is diagonal, that is applying a load um, that is aligned with its orientation, grain direction, but is not aligned with the piece that's receiving it. Okay, so there's some notch cut in the bottom piece to receive the top piece. Um, but the load on the top, on the bottom piece is at some angle to its own grain. So I've drawn kind of grain markings so that you can um, kind of remember what the grain directions are. But, you know, for example, for this piece of wood, the grain goes this way, right? And for this piece of wood, the grain goes in this direction. So to calculate the top piece of wood, uh, the bearing resistance at this bearing interface, this is the bearing interface we're talking about here. To calculate the bearing um, strength for the top piece of wood, um, we just use the strength that we, uh, we're just gonna use the compression parallel strength that we're used to. So that bit's easy, but how do I calculate the strength of the bottom piece of wood? Because that load, which I am gonna call NF, is at an angle to its grain direction, right? So its grain direction is this, and the load is coming like this. Okay, so it's coming in at some angle relative to the grain of theta, okay? And this is the key angle here that is gonna come into the equation that we're gonna look at later. It's the angle between the grain direction and the loading direction. Okay. So how do I do this? Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find two different strengths. I'm gonna find the strength of the bottom piece of wood parallel to grain, and I'm gonna find the strength of the bottom piece of wood perpendicular to grain. And I'm gonna use two projected areas to calculate those strengths. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this, this, this bearing surface that's on an angle, which is in um, brown. Let me draw that, maybe I'm gonna draw purple. So purple is the angled grain bearing, uh, the angled uh, bearing surface. I'm gonna split that bearing surface into some component that is um, parallel to grain, uh, perpendicular to grain, and one component that is parallel to grain. So I'm gonna, so this is a component that is um, the perpendicular to grain component, or sorry, the parallel to grain component, and this side will be the area that's the perpendicular to grain component. So I've split this into two different bearing surfaces, okay? And um, this bearing surface down here, this is gonna be my QR. Find QR for this area. And this bearing surface over here, I mean, I'm drawing the length that obviously also has a width, which is equal to the depth of the bearing, um, of the bearing surface right here, which might be the depth of the member. This one is, um, find PR for this area. Okay. Um, but, you know, obviously we're going to assume that since we're just doing a local, we're basically trying to calculate the local crushing strength here, we're not going to take into account um, buckling for the bearing strength of this piece of wood. So 
we're going to consider that Kc, which is the slenderness factor, equals 1.0, which is tantamount to assuming that there's no buckling. Okay, so this is like I've taken my NF and I've split my NF into two components, one component that is perpendicular to grain and one component that is parallel to grain. Um, but I'm not going to compare those individual components to the individual resistances. What I'm going to do is instead of do it, taking this approach, I'm going to take my total NF and I'm going to compare it against a, um, a resistance. So really what I'm doing is I'm calculating one resistance here and one resistance here. And I am combining those, the geometry of those two to come up with an effective resistance. And it's not just combining the vectors. There is an interaction based on um, material mechanics instead. So I can't just combine those vectors together and figure out like a total strength. It's actually gonna be um, somewhere in between those two strengths, right? If I combine the vectors together, I would get a longer vector, um, but that's not the way that it works. Okay, so I find those resistances QR and PR, and then I plug them into a resistance interaction equation. And it looks like this, it's gonna say NR. N is just like a, a force at a general angle. So this is a resistance at some angle. Um, and it's gonna equal PR times QR divided by PR sine squared theta plus QR cos squared theta. And once I plug those two values in and where theta is the, is the angle between the grain direction and the load direction, then I get a resistance NR that I can compare to my load NF. And that's basically all there is to it. So we already know how to calculate PR and QR. So all we have to do at the end is uh, we just have to make sure that we're calculating, we're using the correct areas, which are the uh, pieces here shown in blue. And I'm gonna use those correct areas to calculate PR and QR, put them into the interaction equation, and um, then I'm done. So next we're gonna do an example to show how this works.